Hello there everyone in the EDAP 689 class. This video will be an introduction to our class and how it is going to work. This class, Internet for P12 Teachers, colon, Building a Professional Learning Network. You can't have a PLC unless everyone in it has a PLN. This is going to provide you a lot of very easy to understand content and I hope fun content. It is set up that it can be done over a span of four days. You can decide if you want to go right into it, which if you look here we already have some people who have, um, or you can wait and do it when you want to do it. This class will be conducted in two ways. The first way will be through synchronous learning, meaning that starting tomorrow I will have the class available in real time through an application called Collaborate, which I'm going to show you here in just a minute. But as I'm doing that in real time, it is also recording the video. And that way if you want to drop in, drop out, go in and look at the different videos uh, to re-remember how to do something, uh, it will be sitting there waiting for you. If you have gone in and looked, one of the things you will notice is there are videos in each one of the modules to kind of help you with the technology side of what we're doing. The whole idea of this course is to create a professional learning network. So one of the first things that you're being asked to do when you log in, and you will end up here, is to watch this video, which is essentially that introductory PowerPoint that every class you've ever taken probably has. What we're trying to do here is to help you see how you can leverage technology to provide you with resources that you can share with your colleagues at your school. Now, let's go back to this idea about Collaborate. Collaborate is the tool that Blackboard uses for its video conferencing. It is not a part of Blackboard. Therefore, when you use Collaborate, you're actually being taken outside of the Blackboard environment to a site called uh, Collaborate, which originally was called Illuminate, and you will then be able to see what I'm doing within the Blackboard site. And as I said, when we're finished, I will be taking those videos and uploading them into a, a space for all the Collaborate videos. Now, if you look over here, you'll see that we have a link called Welcome to EDAP 689 and that's where you end up. When you first come into the class you end up here. Underneath that, that's your syllabus. Underneath that, those are the course modules. Underneath that is something called Collaborate 689. This is how you will connect if you want to be a part of the class in synchronous mode. In other words, as if you were sitting there in a room with me and we were able to talk and see each other through our computers. Below that is how you can take the class in asynchronous mode. You'll be able to click on that and it will have here listed all of our videos that I have made in the other classes. Now right now what's in here because I have to put something in here or else it won't show up in Blackboard this is a quick down and dirty video that I like to use. It's not mine, but it does a nice job of explaining how to use Collaborate for a first time user. If you've been in Collaborate before, there's nothing different here. I do not use Collaborate Ultra because I find it's much more difficult to manage in a synchronous mode. Uh, in asynchronous mode, it's fine, but in synchronous mode, I don't like the way it handles uh, people being in the uh, in the room with me presenting and then me trying to follow what what they're asking. Well, let's get back to collaborate. 
So as you can see, there's already a link built in here. I am running Chrome. This will also work on Firefox. It will work on Safari. I would be careful if all you have is Internet Explorer. Or, goodness gracious, help you if you've got Edge. If you do have one of those, go ahead and download either Firefox or Chrome. And I'll show you why here in a second, especially with Chrome. What it has to do is when you click on this link, it has to be able to find this file right here that's called Colab file and start it because remember it's not inside Blackboard. So when I click on join room, what it does is it says where do you want me to save my file? Well now in Chrome it saves it as meeting and I will say save. Notice I'm not worried about where I'm saving it to. And what it does is it saves it in the Chrome window down here at the bottom, which unfortunately <laughs> I can't show you because it's too big on my screen. But there's a little link down here that says meeting. And when I click on that, what that does is that starts the Collaborate running in the background. And what it will do is it'll come up here in a matter of seconds and it'll say, do you want to run this application? You're always going to say run, and when you click on run, what it will do is it will bring you in to this area. Now, as you can see over here, it shows me being in the area. Um, one of the things that the other video that I have in here talks about, and I can't do this because I'm, well, yeah, I can do it. You can go up here to Tools, and you want to go to Audio Setup Wizard. You want to go ahead and work your way through the Audio Setup Wizard to make sure to make sure that everything that you have is working correctly. Uh, I'm going to stop here because if I tell it to record on my microphone, it and the microphone that I'm using to record right now won't get along. But you can see that it recognizes I have a different kind of microphone that I use to record with. Normally, it'll be built-in microphone. And I'm just going to cancel that. You go through those two steps, and that basically gets all of your setup together. I also strongly urge you, if you're going to be joining us, to plug in a pair of headphones. Now, headphones are almost ubiquitous. So if you have a pair of headphones... Um, that you use for listening to your iPhone or your Android device or anything. Just a little pair of white ones, earbuds, put them in. You will find that you can hear much better and you won't get the nasty feedback. Now, that was inside of Chrome. Oh, this over here, this is for me only. Uh, this is where I would tell the, the collaborator to start recording everything. I always have this window open, available for you to join the class 15 minutes before the class starts. So when is the class going to start, Steve? Well, starting tomorrow afternoon through Friday, we will start the class at 4.30 to give the folks who are in elementary schools a chance to get in. I will wait to see how many people show up. If no one shows up, I'll just go right on and work the class as if you, someone's here. Because as I keep saying, this will record everything we do on the screen. So that's Chrome. Let me jump down here and start Firefox. So you can see what Firefox does. Firefox works differently but not all that different. In other words, when you see how it works, you will say, oh, okay, it's the same thing, really. Uh, give me a second here. I've got to go in and get my Firefox. Here we go. Hopefully I won't crash. 
and it's telling me it's out of date. It's a good idea, if yours does say that, to go ahead and update it. I use Chrome, so I'm not going to worry about it. But as you can see, here I am. I'm in the same place. I'm going to go now into Blackboard. And I'm going to log in to my Blackboard site. And I am looking for 585, uh, excuse me, 689, 51, 41, 78, right here. And as you can see, it lands me in the same place. I'm going to come over here to the Collaborate 689 link in this one. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead I'm going to click on this link, just like we did before. And I'm going to tell it that I want to join the room. Now, if it can't find a Colab file, I can download it right here. When I download it, just tuck it away somewhere on your computer so that when you join the room for the first time, it will link over to where that is and start it. Let me show you what I mean. You see? It says, do you already have it installed? Launch the Blackboard Collaborator now. Well, let's go ahead and download that so you can see it. And as you can see, it says I'm going to download it as a zip file. And then I'm going to tell it to go ahead and, and launch it and run it. And what it's doing now is it is looking for Firefox. And once it finds Firefox, because that's the file that it wants to open it with. Now, did you notice I didn't really do much? I didn't download it. I didn't have to go looking for it. Um, you see, it's barking at me because I've got, um, I'm sitting in the other one already through Chrome. But I didn't have to go through any jumpy, hoopy things. It's just, it says, oh, you're using Firefox. You want to launch collaborate just keep saying run okay installed in other words just walk through the prompts and it eventually will get you to here and as you can see we are in the room looks just like it did over in chrome it's just barking at me because it says that i am already in another room well that's right so i'm going to go ahead and quit and i'm going to come back and quit out of Firefox. And now I'm back over here inside of Chrome. So the other thing I want to make sure you understand is if you want to join the class in real time, in synchronous mode, you would come to the class starting at 4.30 tomorrow, 4.30 on the next day and 4.30 on the next day. And we will be having class in synchronous time. Now, people ask me all the time, I don't know which to do. You do what makes you feel best. If you want to come in tomorrow so you kind of get a sense of how everything works, which I'm going to go over here in just a minute, you can ask the questions that you're probably starting to have. This course was designed to be very, very simple and fun for you. And I'm going to go through that right now. Just one last time, collaborate, click, come in, join room. So if you're not doing this in synchronous mode, all the videos will be here in this link that say collaborate videos. And you could probably guess they'll look like a, a file link that has the name module one, who I am, so on and so on and so on. And there'll be unique videos for each time we meet. So let's go look at what that means. So here we are. This is our first module. And in this module called Who I Am, we are using an online tool called Wikispaces that you will create to house everything we make from here on out. So your Wikispace, if you want to think of it this way, 
is like a folder, a portfolio, and inside of it are all the different pieces that make up this class. Now one of the things that I have done in this one is in this module there are videos that walk you through the Wikispace setup. Another part of what you're creating that will go into your Wikispace. So think about it that way. Your Wikispace is just the beginning. These are the things then that will go into that Wikispace. This one's called a flip grid. The flip grid is that cool tool that we saw at the very beginning where people have dropped in and left little videos, 90 seconds worth, of introductions. You can use Flipgrid for all kinds of formative uh, assessment opportunities, especially if you're a Google Classroom, that it just is a wonderful tool. For our purposes, the Flipgrid would be used as a way to people to introduce themselves into your PLN that you're creating. The idea of the PLN should be that it is shared with other people on your team, in your building. Uh, it could then change because, as you'll learn, you will only be allowed to make one flip grid. They call that the grid. But you can make as many topics as you want. So you might put a topic in there along the lines of what do we need to understand or research first? And people can drop in and leave their comments for you. As I said, as many as you want, and they all will fit on your Wikispace page. The other thing that you're being asked to do in the Wikispace page is you're going to be asked to create a story about your journey about becoming a teacher. We'll be using a tool called GoAnimate to do this, and we'll walk through this when we have our first class meeting. But this is a very good video that walks you through how to use it. Uh, one of the things that uh, it's a little out of date. I've already had people say to me, Steve, where did the themes go? Well, the themes are there. Uh, you just have to use what's called business friendly. Here, let me show you. So you click on that link and it takes you to the site. And we're going to create a video, make a video. And you see the themes, there used to be a whole lot of themes. Well, they moved them all underneath this one theme called Business Friendly. It doesn't mean they have gone away. And you're going to click on Make a Video. And then up here at the top, when it gets through loading in, you will see the ability to choose from Business Friendly. Or you can choose from all kinds of different ones. And here they all are. Uh, this young man likes to keep coming in and asking you if you want to get the tutorial. And as you can see, it's full of friendly, friendly, friendly. But the thing that you need to realize is all the templates are right here under these categories. And so you can scroll down through here and you can see there are categories about holidays. There are categories about government. There are categories about education so on and so on and so on. So somewhere in here, there's even one for pirates. I kid you not, it's hilarious. There's one for space, there's one for superheroes. Let your imagination run wild. And then once you do, you can jump in and you can start building your story. As I said, we will go over this the first day of class. So I'm going to go ahead and click out of that. Our second module will be about developing a Twitter site that informs. Uh, Twitter has become sort of a controversial thing, uh, whatever your politics are. And I find it sad because it's one of the most powerful ways that you can develop resources. And we'll go over how to set one up. But more importantly, and this is the part about that makes this class uh, I think so compelling is when you're finished setting it up and it says here that you need to have at least 10 educators or education organizations that you will follow. Very simple to do and I'll show you how to do it. Once you get all that set, you're going to set them to likes. In other words, you like this and then you're going to be able to create an, a widget 
that you will be able to put into a separate page on your wiki spaces and so you'll never have to go to Twitter again you could just go to the Twitter widget that you have installed on your wiki spaces and it will inform you of what others that you have uh, decided you want to make your liked will be feeding you in other words it's live it's a live Twitter feed I've seen teachers use this in their classrooms uh, as a way for kids to be able to uh, have uh, understandings about what they're doing in the classroom without having to go into the land of the of the tweet this is why I like doing it this way it kinda keeps you out of the out of the trouble that Twitter can land you in the next class will be about module 3 which is who I listen to what we'll be talking about here are the technical term is RSS the term that you may be more comfortable with is podcasting and what we're doing here is we are going to be talking about the ways that you can capture either text, video, or audio that can be delivered to your Wikispace page. Um, the thing about this is think about it as subscribing to your magazine or your newspaper. You expect you to, to have it delivered to you, and it will be delivered to you via that page that you create in your wiki space. The next one is something I think we all are very familiar with. This is digital curation. And I used to do like two or three of these. But I'm telling you folks, this is the gold standard of resources. Um, a Pinterest account, I'll bet probably 90% of you either have one or know of one. The Pinterest account has everything in it that any classroom teacher could ever use. Everything from ideas for bulletin boards to worksheet ideas to uh, websites that you can use for teaching. Pinterest is the gold standard. And it quickly, quickly uh, just blew the Digo IOs and all those others that P Scoop It is another one that I used to teach about. It has quickly overcome those because it is such a massive amount of information that you can um, get your hands on. Um, and what we're looking for here would be, again would be 10 links that would be Pinterest related to the content that you want. You'll quickly realize that with inside of Pinterest, you can have a Pinterest pin for how to cook, how to build. I have a ton of DIY project pins that I have in my account. By the way, I hope you notice that there's sort of a consistency here. There is, uh, we only do five links here in the RSS, the podcasting. Uh, we do 10 in Pinterest because you'll find them so fast. And then that's it. Here's your final. And all your final does is ask you a few questions about how do you think you did. Could it be any easier? Could it be any easier? Now, if you give me a sec here, let me pull up the live text so you can see how it works. The live text is divided into two sections. The first section has to do with putting in your links to those areas that we built. I know, I know. I have tons and tons of live text stuff. Sometimes I wonder. So if you go into the EDAP, this will be 51. And you'll see that we only have two assignments. Well, the first one is essentially what you're doing is you are going to go in and you're going to be telling us where things are. That's all you're doing. And the easiest way to do this is through using your wiki. So in other words, what you're going to do where it says who, who I am, uh, this isn't, we're in the wrong course, so ignore this that it says Vokey and all that. In your course, the 51, it's all fixed. 
But so what it's saying is, all you need to do to demonstrate this is to copy the URL, the address at the top of the page in your wiki where you have created this, and paste it here. Paste it here. Paste it here. Then down below, it will ask you to reflect back on this whole class and what you liked about it and what you didn't like about it. And that's this one right here. Simple. Very easy to do. I hope you'll find it as simple to do as I found in creating it. So, let's go over. We will be meeting starting tomorrow at 4.30 in this space, this Collaborate space. We will be going over the first module, Who I Am, um, and you're more than welcome to be there. If you can't be there, or if you want to do this on your time and in your space, come back. I will have these posted the very next day, if not sooner. Uh, the turnaround time on Collaborate videos is really quite fast. They've gotten really good about it. So I will try to get these up there uh, that the same day that we actually do them. And they will be right here. And you can scroll down and you'll see them. They'll be easily identifiable. Module 1, who I am, and so on. As always, and I stress this in everything I put out there, and folks have already taken advantage of it. As always, you can reach me via text, SMS text, at 502-457-2937. 502-457-2937. Uh, these two ladies down here that jumped in early god love them for taking the first plunge uh, already have texted me with some questions and they got an immediate if not right away they got an answer within an hour and that's the way i roll if you want to use email you can i'll be monitoring it but i'm telling you if you have that point where you're working and you're stuck or you're sitting there and you're going what the heck does he want here pick up your phone text me and ask the question and you'll get an answer um, I would ask that the first time you text me say hi Steve and everybody quit calling me Dr. Swan it's Steve say hi Steve I have a question this is so-and-so now only need to do that one time because immediately what I'll do is create a contact for you so the next time you ask me a question it'll pop up with your name in it but if you'll do that for me that way I know who you are when you're texting me that's it. Oh, what do we do about when we're finished with Collaborate? Well, you just go up here and you go, quit Collaborate. And boom. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I know the first time you do Collaborate can be a little scary. So I would urge you to go ahead and try it before the class that you're going to jump into. And remember, you've got me. Now, let's talk about a little bit about the schedule. I'm going to be able to be with you in synchronous mode for the first three modules. The problem is on Monday, the 18th, I go in for, for some bariatric surgery. Um, and I will probably be a little bit down and out for the Monday, Tuesday of next week. I will be back in the saddle to do the last one, which, you know, I just can't say enough about how much I love Pinterest. I mean, you can look, you can tell it's on my computer because already the little pin sign is popping up and saying, hey, do you want to save this? Um, I just love Pinterest, and I think it's almost self-explanatory, but, you know, I'll be glad to show it to you. This is the one where you kind of have to have somebody with you hold hands. That'll be Friday. This will be Thursday. And as I said, this will be tomorrow. Look forward to being with you. As always, do not hesitate to text or email. Text is better. With questions, uh, if you really need to talk to me, don't hesitate to call on that same number. It's my cell phone number. Good luck. 
and I really look forward to seeing you, if not tomorrow, sometime in the future.